Hi there guys, welcome back to Deadly Stuff and another Orsa Challenge video today. Now, this is a little bit of a special one. Me and the guys in the Orsa gang were having a lot of success with some Orsa runs that we did earlier today. And as a result, the times that we managed to take out the bosses were quite short. So, it's a free for one special, basically. Now before we get into it, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. Now to remind anybody that doesn't know, or has forgotten, an Orsa challenge basically involves us running around in the basic armour in the game. It's got crap speed, crap defences, crap HP, and yeah, you need to use the best of your abilities to avoid getting completely destroyed. And as you can see here, we're taking on Dreadnought using only melee weapons. And if you know Dreadnought, most of the damage he does is by ramming into you at close range. So you can imagine when you've got no defense and you're close range, he's going to do a lot of damage. The best strategy we found was basically just to target the cores. Um, what I also found is if you're doing the amount of damage we're doing here, it bugs him out a lot. Like quite literally during one of the attempts, he fell through the floor, appeared on top of us and killed two of us instantly with literally no warning. So if you do this challenge on your own uh, time with some of your friends, beware of that. So we decided to go golfing. But we didn't have a golf ball, so we decided to beat the crap out of Eclipse. Now the problem with Eclipse is that he is quite agile, he moves in three dimensions, and he has a bunch of crazy little techniques to use in order to avoid you hitting them. In short, the hammers just weren't going to cut it. So what we decided is we'll switch to swords, and the greater amount of speed and agility you get from using the swords proved to be incredibly, incredibly useful. Um, we pretty much just minced them. Uh, all you need to do in the case of this is just focus on the main body. Once he hits his fractal stage, he lights up like a Christmas tree, so he's really, really easy to find and take out. So, yeah, it's definitely swords over hammers for this one if you're going melee. Now, with a good team, this boss fight is relatively easy. You just focus down the main body. When he hits his fractal stage and starts splitting into other immortals he pretty much has an orange glow so it makes them a lot easier to find and the last boss we decided to take on was the dominator more specifically dominator alpha Pretty much he's just the standard Dominator moveset, you know, he's got his gravity cannon that pulls your freaking weapon out of your hand, um, he's got all his little floating laser cannons that chase you around, his spin attack, all that. The basic strategy we employed is just using our, well, I, I suppose dexterity that we've built up from playing the game for so long to avoid all the main attacks whilst beating the living daylights out of him with our melee weapons and utilizing just the fact that he can only focus one of us at a time realistically um, which yeah it worked out quite well I found that the boss fight itself did not feel difficult at all and I'm fairly certain I don't really get hit at all by him he, he struggles to chase me down for the most part of the fight and yeah it's just about teamwork and coordination I feel with this one. We've been playing together for quite a while now so we're kind of used to what we need to do and we've fought all the bosses so many times that it's kind of second nature to us at this point. Out of all the boss fights today this is the longest by far. Now I don't know if that's because Dominator just has significantly more HP than the rest of the, the, the immortal bosses we fought today. Maybe only coming second to Zurich Roar himself, but if anybody knows for certain, post it down in the comments. I'd, I'd really like to know um, what Dominator's HP is in comparison to the rest of the Immortals anyway. 
Though what I would say in comparison to the video where I fought Dominator as just an outer, this is going a lot quicker than that. Um, if you really want a challenge, try and fight Dominator as a outer using Skylifter, and yeah, you will you will not have an easy time with that fight. It is 99% luck and cheese, if I'm honest. <laughs> There's a, a degree of skill involved, but it is quite a lot of luck and just good time. So guys, I'm sure you're well aware that our community has increased in size with the addition of the Steam version of the game. And I'd like to put a little kind of thing out there of if anybody has any kind of idea of what they'd like to see in the future from my content on Damon X Machina, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I'd really enjoy um, reading you guys' comments and find out what you'd like me to do. Um, there's still quite a lot of things in game that I can do and I'm working on. Um, but if there's something that I obviously haven't thought about, I would definitely love to hear from you guys about it. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of that. And like that, the video's over. So thank you very much if you've managed to get this far through the video. I really appreciate every view and every bit of watch time that I get. It's been quite insane the past couple of days. I mean, not insane as in the big YouTubers, insane for me. I mean, the amount of views and watch time I've been getting has been great and I, again, really appreciate it. So, if you've got to this point in the video, don't forget to leave a like if you liked the video, dislike if you didn't, um, a comment if you did or didn't like the video uh, about why you didn't like it, about why you liked it and whatnot, and subscribe to me for more videos like this in the future. So, catch you guys later.